For thousands of years, our ancient ancestors have been obsessed about building temples and it required an immense amount of precision. So we're going back 3000 years to Babylonia, pre-Egypt, back to Samaria. And for thousands of years, they were building these massive temples, but they had to understand what pi is. So pi, if we have a circle, this black circle, so the distance from here to the other end, the diameter is one. And we take that diameter of one and we say, how many times does the diameter one go around the circle? So we know that the distance goes from one to there, then that's two, and then we add another one. So there's three units. So pi was all about this obsession about three and a bit. And we're going to see here that in Babylonia, 2000 years ago, they calculated pi to be 256 divided by 81. So that was roughly 3.16. So that's getting close, but it was sufficient. Then at 500 BC, at the time of Buddha, we had Pythagoras. So here's an image of Pythagoras. And he knew, so Pythagoras knew that there was a relationship between the square and the circle. And today when we say someone's crazy, we say, oh, they're a circle squarer. But this diagram of the, the square of one by one, when we, to make the, the perimeter four equal to the circle, we have to open up the circle to a thing called 1.272. It's called the golden root. So this squaring of the circle was known to the Pythagoreans that it was a kept, well kept secret. And the reason why it's special is that distance of 1.272 was the height of the pyramid. So if this base was one and one is two, the height was the was the mathematics of pine cones and flowers. So this was a well kept secret. So all of this beginning was how to build pyramids with the perfect height. So, so just after Pythagoras, we had Herodotus. He went to Egypt. He met the Egyptians, and they told him that the height, that the height of the pyramid, was one point two seven two. But he recorded in his diaries that if you took the square on the height of the pyramid, that's one point two seven two, square it. 1.272 squared is 1.618. They found that there was a golden ratio in the pyramid and that the area of that square on the height was equal to the triangular face. So here's the two and a half thousand years ago, the area of that triangle on the pyramid was, was the square on the height and that height was the squaring of the circle. So we've had advanced mathematics two and a half thousand years ago. And then at 300 BC, we have another character called Udumus. And not many people know about Udumus, but he was arguing to say that we can never calculate the area under the curve of a circle. So if we have a circle, the black circle there, we, we have to draw lots and lots and lots of little triangles, like a pizza cuts, to calculate the area under the curve. And we believe that as we drew more and more polygons, the area under the curve naturally diminished or was gone but Udumus argued that we can never calculate the area under the curve that's why I've got the cross there so you can see that in ancient times we had debates just like we are today say what's the right musical pitch is it 440 hertz or 432 so in those days 2000 years ago they openly debated about the true value of pi or the concert pitch and then at, again around 287 BC we had Archimedes so Archimedes was the first person to give us a closer value of pi at 3.142. We're actually trying to get to 3.141, but he said it was 22 over 7. And he used the, so he drew the circle and then he put the hexagon inside. And by drawing more um, triangles inside the circle, we got the inner bound. So that six sided became 12 sided, 24 sided like pizzas up to a million and a billion. But he could only go so far by hand because what we're leading up to is the advancement of technology that allowed us to divide the circle into millions of little triangles. And we're still trying to measure the area under the curve. But there's a big hexagon around the circle that's called the outer bound. So, the, so Archimedes knew 300 years ago that pi was roughly 22 divided by 7 by calculating lots of triangles using Pythagoras' theorem, 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. And then, then we go, so that was all the Babylonian, Egyptians, the Greeks, but now we move to China, where we're at 470 AD now. There's been many other people in between, but Zhu Chongzi, 
he calculated pi to six decimal points. He said it was 355 divided by 113, and he said it was 3.141592, which is very accurate to have done that about, um, say, 600 years ago. And then in the 12th century, we have famous Indians called Bhaskaracharya. Acharya means teacher. He calculated it to be 3.1416. And then about 600 years ago, about um, 1450 AD, we had Madhava. He was in South India of a place called Kerala. And he, he didn't do it as a division. He did it as a sequence. One minus a third plus a fifth minus a seven. You can see a pattern with odd numbers. Um, and then later on, we've got over here, John Wallace in 1650 AD, he multiplied all these numbers, like two over one times two over three times four over three. You can see a pattern. So, so mathematicians were now working with additive sequences and sequences that were multiplied, the obsession to get closer and closer to the true value of pi. And then um, in 1580, we had Francois Villette do pi to nine decimal places. So you can see it's increasing. And then William Jones in 1706, about 300 years ago, he introduced the symbol for pi. A lot of people say, why do we use this Greek letter, which is the P sound, pi, whereas the golden ratio is the F sound, phi. So this is the Greek letter for P, which is called pi. And then in 873, William Shanks created, found pi to 528 decimals. And it took him 15 years on paper, hand and paper, to calculate pi. You can see now the obsession. In 1942, we had Oppenheimer create the atom bomb. Now, we've, we've, we're moving into technology now, even though it was a bit destructive. But with the whole obsession about pi in its accuracy is that it's a wormhole or a portal into the many worlds. And it's, it's all about right intention because now we've got the computers in 1949 they could calculate pi to 2,000 calculations per second. And they calculated pi to 2,037 decimal places. And now it's gone into the billions and the trillions. And um, then in around 1989, um, there's a Greek professor called Professor Stephanides. He's calculating pi based on the golden ratio, but he's using what's called fourth order polynomial equations, which are so advanced, people don't get it. So then I come along I um, mean, around 2000, and I created the first world's geometric proof that anyone can understand that the true value of pi is 3.144, that the, this obsession about circle diameter ratio must be based on the living mathematics of pine cones, sunflowers, known as the golden ratio. So that's been the journey, and it's still evolving. It's, it's, um, it's basically really that this is psychoactive mathematics and it's all about placing our pure intention with pi so that we can go to the next octave of awareness and humanitarian needs. Thank you.